بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. My name, my birth is Muhammad Ibn Munir Abdul Hamid. I was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in University City, July 7th, 1984. That's where I was born and raised, Philly. My parents had accepted Islam. My mother and my father, I would say in the maybe late 60s, early 70s. Me, my three sisters, were born and raised Muslim. We went to uh, Islamic school when we were younger. And then after that, public school. I always had an interest for like reading. I always loved to read, always loved to study. I think a lot of it is in my genes. Uh, my, my, my mother, my father, they were very, very intellectual type people. It was always a ton of books in my house from my father, from my mother, both Islamic books and non-Islamic books. My mother always would encourage me when I was younger, even before I was like seriously like practicing Islam like that, uh, you know, let alone learning about Sunnah and overseas. She would always, always encourage me to go to the library. I remember her words, she would always tell me, she said, I named you Muhammad for a reason. Your name is not Martin, it's not Michael. I gave you the name Muhammad. I made dua for you. I prayed for you. And you know, when I got pregnant the last time I conceived you, I knew it was you. That's what she said. She said, I prayed and I asked the Lord to give me a son and I can name him Muhammad. And he would be excellent, he would be different. So she would always like get on my case saying, don't be average, don't be ignorant, don't be foolish, don't be stupid like many other people you may see. Educate yourself, read. Uh, you know, always have books, always be involved with some type of science, some type of, you know, academic study, something. So that always was in my head. Even when I wasn't, like I said, uh, you know, I didn't have such a great desire to like go receive and study. So I think I probably became enlightened, quote unquote, when I was maybe 15 years old, between 15 and 16. Uh, one day I was in the house and as I said, I was looking through some of my father's books. He had a, a ton of them and I came across some of his personal notes. And he basically, he used to study Arabic, which was a, a rare thing in his time. Somebody that was, you know, from America, that didn't travel overseas extensively to learn and study Arabic, learn the Quran. It, it was pretty much, you know, it's a rare thing nowadays, com considering the number of people. But it was really rare back then. So um, when I came across some of the notes that he had written down in Arabic, his index cards. And he, he, had, he had, you know, it was like some, some Naho notes that we would say now. Obviously, I didn't know that back then, but I knew it was Arabic, but I didn't know what it was, you know, what it was about. So I looked through it and I just became amazed at it. I was like, wow, what is this? Like, this is like, this is really cool. And uh, I always also looked at the Hajj pictures that he had. He made a Hajj before I was born. And I think it was always like a subtle fascination with overseas, with Arabia. I, I remember vividly, it was a picture album in, in another book he had on a Kaaba. And I remember this vividly. This was even before this. I was maybe 13, 12. How do you, you know, would, would, would write the stitching of the kappa, the Arabic, and gold, and the master calligraphers, and, and the camels, and all of the stuff, the old Jamarat. I, I was fascinated, even though I wasn't, like, interested in studying like that. So when I was 15, I came across the notes, and I went to my mother. I said, you know, what's this, Umi? And she says, oh, that's your Abby's notes. The Abby used to be really good in Arabic. He, he was sharp. It was known. Go to the masjid, go to the brothers there, the older brothers, the masjid Mujahideen. Say, so ask them. Uh, all of them, they know him. They'll tell you how he was. So I don't know. It's just something just like fell into my heart. Like, tag, like this is this is deep. Like, I want to study this, man. So I remember that night, man. I went to the masjid, uh, and I, I was looking for some of the older brothers that were, you know, friends of my father to like to teach me. I asked them, and he was like, sure, no problem. We'll teach you. Whatever, bidden in that. He said, no problem. So, you know, that night and ever since that day, I just kept thinking about it. And I was like, I wanna, I wanna memorize the Quran. You know, you always hear that he's Hafiz Quran, not Hafiz, but Hafiz. Fulan is Hafiz Quran. Fulan is Hafiz Quran. Fulan is Hafiz Quran. So it was always like, you know, a fascination with it. So I said, you know, I said, I, I wanna do that. I wanna be that. So from that day, I waited for them to teach me the classes. And I also went to 52nd Street, 52nd and Chestnut. I went and I bought myself how to read the Quran, how to teach yourself the Quran. In there, it has the Fatiha, and I say maybe like 12 short surahs and the Roman transliteration. Wailun li kulli humazatin lumaza. Okay, all written out in Latin. So that's how I started memorizing the Quran. And I remember this vividly. This was probably like maybe 9th, 10th grade. I, I would take it to school every day. 
And I wasn't wearing thobes and kufis and stuff, but I started getting really religious. I was making all five salats in the masjid, and the house was around the corner from the, from, from the masjid, as I said. So it was like, you know, literally like five minute walk. So I kept going to the masjid, speaking to some of the older brothers, like, you know, when you want to teach me, when you want to teach me, Sheikh. And it was one brother named Brother Hudayfa. Allah bless him. And he knew Arabic, and uh, he knew my father well. He knew me when I was born, actually. He tells me all the time. So I went to him, and he promised me, he says, sure, I'll teach you no problem. So a day went by, a week went by, two weeks went by, and I just kept asking him, I kept getting frustrated. And for one reason or another, he just kept pushing me off, putting me off, inshallah, I'm a teacher, inshallah. And perhaps, Allah knows best, but perhaps he did it intentionally. He gave me that thirst and that hunger, that raw the appetite to learn because I got frustrated and I quit and I stopped asking and that's when I started teaching myself. So when I was about 15 or 16, that's when I started learning Arabic, my life changed. I started learning Arabic and I started learning Quran by myself because I didn't have a teacher. So that's how I got started studying Islam, studying Arabic, learning and memorizing the Quran. That's how I got started. Obviously things just stopped, you know, they kept going uphill. Uh, I learned more, I read more. I eventually uh, came across a teacher my first teacher, formal teacher, was named Sheikh Sadiq. He's from Ivory Coast. He had studied in Saudi years ago. And he was on classes in Masjid Jamia on 42nd and Walnut. So I, I, I came across some other brothers and they told me, you know, go to Sheikh Sadiq. You know, he's like razor sharp. So I went to his class. We studied with him maybe a year and a half. Uh, it was older brothers in the class. For some reason, I don't know, who, you know, why. It was like I felt like I was like the ugly duckling, you know, no one wanted to help me out. I would always get pushed aside, no one, it's, it's how I felt. And uh, eventually I stayed in the class until everybody started dropping out. And I started like excelling and going faster and harder. And it came to the point in which Sheikh Sadiq would put me in charge of the class. And he would say, you know, you run the class when I'm not here. So all the rest was like, like, how is this? Just yesterday he came, you know, he was the youngest guy, he didn't know anything, we were here first. And then it just, the class became just me and him. And we studied three nights out the week. Two nights it was a uh, conversation and grammar. We did some books from Riyadh, a few books from Medina. It is full blown Arabic books we were studying, Alhamdulillah, I was still in high school. And we, uh, we did Tajweed and further memorization of the Quran. Then I had another teacher, a brother named Tofiq Abu Zainab. He was an American brother. He had studied in Egypt, studied in Yemen. He'd been overseas. He started teaching me Ajurumiya. And he also started teaching me some of the other Medina books. And he started putting me down with other Arabic books. And I, I benefited a lot from him as well. And then, um, obviously, I met uh, a few brothers from the Islamic University of Medina. Uh, Sheikh Musa, Allah bless him, Allah preserve him. Uh, I met him. He was the one who gave me the idea to go to Medina. Right now, I'm about 17, going towards 18. I was full blown in my studies, but I didn't know about Medina yet. Uh, and I came across him in Masjid Jamia. And uh, he heard about, you know, that I had learned Arabic. And he's like, you know, I hear a lot of good about you. He says, but what, what's your plans after high school? I said, I want to study Islam. He says, where do you want to study Islam? I says, here in America. You know, I'll go to California somewhere or Virginia or something. He says, let me tell you something better. I said, what? He says, once you go to the Prophet City, once you go to Medina. So my eyes are like, like, Medina? Like, wow, how can I do that? He said, all you got to do is just finish high school and go overseas. That's all you need. You'll get a full paid scholarship. When he said those words to me, without any exaggeration, you know, that was like the major point in my life. Like nothing else mattered or meant anything to me except going to Medina, studying in Medina. That was my dream. That's all that mattered. So I finished high school. Uh, I traveled to Medina and uh, I was 18 now. Uh, and at this time, me and Musa, you know, we were best friends. Alhamdulillah. He was a couple years older than me, but we were best friends. We were like inseparable, you know, day and night. I was his shadow. He ate, we ate, we traveled, we did everything. And I, and I, I kept learning from him. He taught me more stuff. These are the books of the ulama. This is Fulan, Hafid Fulan, Imam Fulan. This, he teaches here, there, there. I'm just amazed. I mean, like literally, like just amazed at everything he could tell me, man. Everything he could give me. And we spent all of our money on books. And this, back then we were listening to tapes. They had CDs, but, you know, tapes were still in like heavy, heavy circulation. So we just ride around all day listening to tapes, listening to lectures. Well, like, that's all we did. Teaching, translating books, listening to lectures, ca calling overseas. This is what we do. He was home on a break, and I still, you know, I was finishing school. So I went to Medina with him. Uh, and when I got to Medina, it was just like amazing. I remember the first night I got there, I couldn't breathe. It was so hot. Well, like, man, I was like, what is this? 
it was so hot, man. It was at nighttime. I couldn't breathe, literally. Um, so we started settling. They took me to the university. I did the interview. Alhamdulillah, I didn't need a translator. I was fluent in Arabic. I did the interview in Arabic. And then, you know, like, it's like, inshallah, you'll get accepted. So I started studying when I was in Saudi, and it was my intention to stay. And I remember it was a brother's apartment we were staying at the time, a brother named Jamal, uh, from southwest Philadelphia. He was a student there as well. And Musa asked brother Jamal, he says, can, can, can Mufti stay? Mufti doesn't want to go back. Jamal looked at him like, of course, like, I'm not going to kick him out. Yeah, he can stay. He can stay as long as he wants. So I stayed there. Uh, I visited the university. I visited the language program briefly, maybe about a month, maybe. Uh, visited some of the classes there, benefited from some of the classes there. Uh, and a lot of the teachers in the classroom, you know, they would call on me when I was there. And they were like, you know, like, where are you from? Where would you study Tajweed? Where would where, you learn how to recite? And I wasn't in the school. I tell them, I'm, I'm here in Umrah. They said, all right, inshallah, you need, you, know, you need to get accepted. So anyway, um, you know, the viewers, <laughs> I want to just be honest, okay? There's no point in, you know, lying or making anything up. I stopped going to the school when I was, when my visa had expired. I had a two-month visa. Uh, just being honest. The Lord forgive me if I did something wrong. I'm just being honest. You know, alhamdulillah, I had no intentions on leaving. And my visa being good or bad, it didn't concern me. Uh, and this hopefully, hopefully, inshallah, hopefully this will be a message to the brothers, the young brothers, man, that we always try to say, man, that you have to be passionate. You have to be hungry. You can't just be sitting back thinking that knowledge is going to come to you. You have to go after it. And sometimes it may be a thing that you have to do that may not be the best thing to get that knowledge. You got to be aggressive. You, you, you have to be hungry for it. So I didn't care about visa. I was staying. Okay. And when my visa ran out, that's when I stopped going to the school, you know, just to avoid any, you know, unworn, unneeded drama, as they say. So uh, I would stay home uh, and I continue to teach myself. I continue to read. I honed a lot of my skills. Um, you know, I, I used to do a lot of translations. Obviously, a lot of people, they see, you know, I, began, I learned how to write fast like that in the house. And I had a tape recorder, a Sony tape recorder, Walkman. And I just had this whole wall full of tapes. Okay, any of the mashaks, any tape we could come across, I would transcribe it. I would write it down, stay up all night. I had insomnia, I couldn't sleep. Uh, I got sick in the beginning, and I would just write, 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 study, memorize, read books. And then at nighttime, uh, like Isha time, or Maghrib time, we would visit the mashaks sitting in their classes, in the haram, in their houses. That's all we used to do. And that was it. Uh, so that was for about maybe about eight months. And then uh, Sheikh Musa, he left. Uh, brother Jamal left, the other brothers they left, I was there pretty much by myself for some time. A few other brothers were there from, from Chester, a couple other brothers from other parts of Philly. And um, I, I eventually left. I left Medina to go back home. Uh, I didn't have no, I mean, I don't want to, you know, call, mention no horror stories. This time we have no food, literally. Wallahi, no food. We had no money. We were starving. I mean, it was times I literally remember boiling water because I didn't have money for spring water. And you couldn't just drink the water out the faucet without getting sick. So there was times we had to boil water and put it in the refrigerator to drink. It was times we had literally meals with bread and water. That's it. That's it. Bread and yogurt. So eventually, I had to leave that place. Brother Jamal wasn't there. All the other brothers were gone. And, it, you know, we, I left. And I was uh, hoping to get ex ex accepted. So I went back to America. And then uh, that summer, the, ro the results came out of those who got accepted, and I wasn't on the list. I remember that day I cried, man. Literally. I cried like a baby. I was so upset. I was heartbroken. And called it Allah. So um, I continued to study. I continued to learn. Uh, I, I, you know, I started teaching classes. I became a man of a masjid. I was like 18 going, you know, 19. And uh, I just kept learning. And I think that's the thing that helped me out a lot, is I kept moving forward even though I was in America, and this is a very important lesson, is that you can study and benefit no matter where you are, if you're hungry enough. If you're willing to scrape your knuckles on the concrete, you can learn no matter where you are. So about a year went by, maybe a year, a couple months, we heard that Yemen was, was reopened. Sheikh Mupil obviously was you know, a legend. Sheikh Mupil, many other brothers who studied with Sheikh Mupil, I looked up to them a lot and learned from them as well in Philadelphia, I benefited from those brothers. And I would look up to them, okay? There's no doubt about that. And we, we went to make Umrah again. And this time I got another record, letter of recommendation from one of the Mashaikh. 
uh, who knew me, he was impressed. He's like, you know, you need to come. He's like, come stay in my house. So we made Umrah at Prophet University a second time. So then we left Medina, we left, we went back. Uh, then I had a fire at my house. I was living in Camden, New Jersey. I was, uh, I was there and my house burnt down. My apartment, all my books, passport, everything I burnt. That was like a crushing blow. But it was also a blessing. It was a nitma. Uh, when everything caught on fire, uh, a lot of the brothers, they came and they put together money. They put together a lot of money. My library was burnt, everything was burnt. I lost everything. And they, brought, they put together money and I took that money and I took my family overseas, we went to Yemen. So I stayed there for maybe about a year and I've been there fitted in Yemen tremendously. By the time I went to Yemen, alhamdulillah, I was you know, fluent in Arabic, I could study, read, it was alhamdulillah, memorize, it was nothing, alhamdulillah. You know, but I went to Yemen, that was like, it's like hyperdrive, man, like, like light speed, like I just took off when I went to Yemen. Uh, the classes, the atmosphere, the environment, the mashaykh, the books they were teaching, Sayyid Bukhari, this, that, memorizing whole books. And I just benefited in Yemen like, you know, tremendously. And I was there, and one day I got a phone call, and this is ironic, the brother who called me that day in Yemen, uh, for one reason or another, we know we don't even speak no more. We don't have a relationship at all. Rather, I'm, there's many negative things that he'll say about me to this day that he has said. Alhamdulillah, that's not a problem. That's between him and Allah. But it's ironic how, you know, friends become friends, friends become strangers. It's very ironic. So he called me, he says, Mufti, Mufti, this is what he called me then. Okay, it wasn't Muhammad, Muhammad, he says, Mufti. He says, Mufti, uh, I think you got accepted in Medina. I think your name's on the list. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, what name did you use to apply? So obviously I have different names. Sometimes my name is Muhammad Hamid, sometimes Muhammad Ibn Munir Abdul Hamid. He said, I think your name's on the list. It was him and it was another brother on the phone. And uh, at that time I was teaching classes. I had a, a library full of students. They said, yeah, you got accepted. So I'm like, wow, should I stay in Yemen? Keep learning, keep benefiting every day. We were studying four or five books. Or should I leave Yemen and go to Medina? So I prayed, I said, I thought about it, I pondered over it, and I finally, you know, uh, resolved. I said, you know, let me go back to Medina. Let me follow my first dream. And that's how I went to Medina. When I got there, I had another decision to make, go to the College of Hadith, because Hadith, that was my passion, or study the language program. I'm like, language program? Like, that's a joke. So the brother's like, yeah, Mufti, like, man, I remember it was one brother from the UK named Owais. Good friend of mine, he said, he said, be a man, Mufti. He said, go to Hadith. That's your dream. You're studying in Yemen. You don't need the language program. It's a waste of time. I know other brothers who had, you know, no, you need to go to the language program. You shouldn't, you shouldn't go directly to the college. You can study longer. You can read more books. You can study with the ulama longer. And there's another ironic, ironic part of the story is that the brother who said that turned out to be a person that had a terrible jealousy and envy of me. And it was deep how Allah showed me certain things. He didn't want me to go to the college because he was afraid of me outshining him, unfortunately. And that wasn't my intention. So I went to the college of Hadith. Uh, and before I went there, they gave me a test, actually. They give you a little test. Are you strong enough? Alhamdulillah, I, you know, the test was like a joke, you know, like a knife through cheese. So Alhamdulillah, not saying that arrogantly, not saying that, just saying, you know, being real. So I went to the College of Hadith and that was it. Uh, I had problems with the visa, the paperwork, you know, going to D.C., getting everything done. Uh, so when I got to school, it was about maybe two, three weeks into the school. So I remember I sat in the back of the class. All the seats were full. And uh, I had people in my class from Egypt, from Nigeria, from Kuwait, from Bosnia, from all over the place. I mean, I had like a lot of, a blessing that Allah gave me is that my class was just full of like, you know, like as I say, like killers. I mean, these guys were like, you know, lethal students, man. They were like real true students of Hadith. And that was a blessing upon me because I, I, I vibed off their energy, okay? And they, they pushed me to become more and more and more obsessive and to study harder and stronger. So anyway, I was sitting in the back of the classroom, and uh, I was always eager to participate in the class. And one of the things I benefit from Yemen is always answer, always try, even if you don't know, always put your hand up. So I kept raising my hand, raising my hand, raising my hand, raising my hand. So I would notice a lot of brothers, they'd keep looking like, what the heck is this? Who is this guy? He keeps raising his hand in the back of the class. He keeps raising his hand. He wasn't in the beginning of the class. Who is he? And I remember there was one class, it was with Sheikh Abdul Razak, uh, he was teaching us kid Tabato in the first year. And he asked us a question. And he said, who can tell me such and such, the hukuk of Tawheed, blah, 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 da, 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 da. So I raised my hand. And I said, nah, I'm sheikh. Da, 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 A, B, C, D, so on, so on, so on, so forth. And I'm in the back of the class now. So the sheikh, he sat quiet and he said, 
He says, your answer wasn't good at all. I was like, what? He says, it's not good at all. So I said, okay, tell you. He says, rather it was superb, it was excellent. So the whole class like, wow, like, who is this guy, man? So I had a friend named Ahmed Salama from Egypt. Uh, he walked up to me and said, who are you? He said, where are you from? He says, you're from the UK, you look British. I said, no, I'm from America. He said, I, I, said, I know he's either UK or America. So he says, what do you know? Who's Sheikh Ibn Baz? Da -da -da. Who do you know about Sheikh Labani? Da -da 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 -da. He just started coming at me just like that. So I told him, you know, boom, 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 boom. He said, who do you know? You know Sheikh Mubil? You know his students, such and such? You, know, you heard Osama and Khusi? And uh, he was like, like testing me out, see where I was. And you know, I, I, you know, I gave him back what he wanted. He said, right. he says, are right, you going to study with me now? And um, we just started like, you know, we became close friends. And we would just literally like, you know, memorize everything for, for the tests, for the exams. We would walk to school in the morning, coming back from the Prophet's Masjid, in the Prophet's Masjid, we just memorized everything. And uh, I studied there, and um, I finished a four-year program, Alhamdulillah. And uh, I studied and I learned so much. Allah blessed me, Allah was so merciful to me. So much that we learned in those four years, in the Prophet's Masjid, from the Mashaykh, in the Mashaykh's home, the books that, it's so, I can't explain it in words, will I? And then another dream came true, and that was my dream to study in the master's program. That was another dream that Allah had blessed me. May Allah make us grateful. I mean, I got accepted into that program. That was another four years initially. Then it eventually took five years. I wrote my thesis. Uh, Ahmed Salam was in my class as well, and other brothers. It was 12 of us, only 12 of us. And, uh, you know, that's how the story goes, basically. That's basically how the story goes. Obviously, that's the summarized version. I'm sure some details I could have left out, and there's many, many details that I, I, I could have mentioned, but I didn't for lack of time. That's basically, uh, you know, my education with regards to Islam or academics and brief. Allah well, Alam. Well, currently, um, there's a, a several things that I'm doing. I'm currently an Imam, Masjid Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah, uh, in Jamaica, New York. Full time Imam there. Uh, also, in the mode of finishing my degree, inshallah, pursuing my doctor's degree, bidding in subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, also trying to stay focused on, I would say, one of the one of the most important, if not the main benefit of the master's program that our teachers told us, and that is to continue to research and also to write, to author. So working on a few books in Arabic and also a few more books in English and trying to stay focused on hadith studies. That's it. Uh, that's very hard, obviously, and that's a very long discussion but trying to stay centered and focused on hadith studies. So right now, trying to pay zakat on the little knowledge that we have. And our teachers will always tell us that. No matter what degree you get, no matter where you study, don't ever forget your people. Uh, and that teaching knowledge never contradicts learning and studying knowledge. And many brothers, they may feel, I don't want to teach because I can't study no more. And you know, I have the exact opposite philosophy. From my own studies, and just from the advice of many of my mentors, they would say, teaching is learning. Writing is learning. So that's about it. Uh, we have tons of classes that we teach there for many books of Hadith and other books of Hadith. Uh, several different masjids, several different boroughs. We have classes in Brooklyn, classes in Manhattan, classes in the Bronx, classes in Queens. We're not Staten Island, not yet. Um, inshallah. Uh, Obviously, inshallah, continuing the studies, the formal academic studies, that's a long discussion in itself. Uh, I chose to leave Medina and pursue my PhD in America for several reasons. And that's a long discussion too. Uh, and many people, they may not agree with that, but I mean, that's life. You can't do what everybody likes. You have to do what's good for you. You have to do what works, not what, what, what people, you know. And you can't, you know, I, I had many of my teachers that personally told me, personally, they said, they say, Sheikh Mohammed, don't do your PhD in Medina. Many of them say, do it in America. Go back to your country and do it there, and there's several benefits in you doing it there. So basically, that's what I'm doing now. Trying to stay involved uh, as much as possible in the traditional dawah, teaching the masajid. Trying to stay involved in the academic realm as well. Uh, and most importantly, trying to continue all the skills that I learned in the master's program and in the bachelor's program with regards to researching, reading, debating, and writing. 
So that's basically, you know, what we're trying to do right now. And to be honest, uh, since being asked, may Allah make me worthy for this. What we want to do, inshallah, we want to do something called a hadith renaissance or hadith revolution. We want to, bidden and I'm going to say this openly, uh, may Allah increase my greed in this. I mean, I want to be the one, inshallah. There are other brothers who came before me, come after me that are better than me, but I want to be the one, inshallah, to be the one that gives that, that jolt of energy and electricity back to the hadith and sunnah in America, in the West. Reviving the culture of hadith on all levels, for the layman Muslim, for the students of knowledge, and bringing the love, the respect, and the passion back to the books of hadith. Because it's something that's so sweet and so addictive, if you only but knew. And I remember I was in a prophet's masjid one night, uh, and I read in the introduction of the Ilal of Adar al Khutni, and the Muhaqqiq, uh, the editor of the book, Sheikh Mahfoud al Rahman, uh, who's from India, and uh, his son was actually in my class. He's one of my colleagues, uh, Khalid Mahfoud, who's one of the best students. Um, he, he, he had a, a statement in the introduction of the book. One of the students of Imam Adar al Khutni, uh, Abu Bakr al Barqani, rahimahullah. And one day he was sitting with his students in Baghdad, and he said out to them, he says, like, you know, oh, oh brothers, oh students, he says, make dua for me. He says, ask Allah to remove the love of hadith from my heart. He says, for indeed it preoccupies me from everything. Hadith has taken over my life. And when I remember I read that statement, and the other things is like, so I want to be the one, inshallah, to, you know, revive it, man, and bring it back and show it and teach it. And also bring a lot of clarity to misconceptions that many brothers have and sisters, students and laymen. That's, that's what we want to do, inshallah. Bidnillah. May Allah make it easy for us. Barakallah fikum. Anything else would be your last word? Uh, my last word is um, we hope that Allah will keep everybody safe. Uh, we can't forget to give a shout out to all of the disciples. Uh, wherever they may be, in Australia, the UK, London, Birmingham, Canada, South America, Central America, North America, Philly, New York. We give a shout out to all of the Hadith disciples worldwide. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We give you greetings. We ask Allah to bless you all. Uh, please, inshallah, make sure you benefit from the different videos uh, on the channel. Uh, our brother, Sheikh Sajid, may Allah bless him. May Allah give him tawfiq. May Allah help him and his family and allow him to, 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 to be a winner in this life and hereafter. Ameen. I just ask Allah to keep everybody safe and keep everybody steadfast uh, and keep everybody as disciples, inshallah. Hadith Disciple uh, on YouTube, HadithDisciple.com. Brothers and sisters, make sure you go to the channel. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you send your requests, your comments. We try our best. Um, is well, I, uh, all types of viewers from all over the place, they have different requests. We can try to do our best to serve you, answer your questions, make the videos for you, uh, give you the different beneficial pieces of information. Hadith Disciple is something that you definitely want to check out. A lot of beneficial things are on the channel. By Allah's permission, make sure you check it out, inshallah. HadithDisciple.com.